Um, so yeah, I mean it's essentially phishing is phishing is one word. Usually we talk about email. And we're talking about is this this idea of I'm going to send you the spam first, and then I'm going to get you to come someplace else to reveal some data. Um, the other one that's often difficult. I'm just trying to go through the attacks that are often difficult to understand. Cross-site scripting. Do you know this one? Okay, and Smurf and Fraggle. Smurf. Smurf is a little bit. It's not an example. So cross-site scripting might be. Let's do these real quick, and then I'll get you out of here. All right. I mean, there's always there's never enough time for us, so. We'll, we'll try. Let's do um, process scripting. is kind of cool. All right. Um, remember the days of surfing the web when you had uh, frames, really, frame, pages with frames in here? Like you'd, you'd come to a web page and it would look like this. And you know, this is, so here's the edge of it, right? Or when, it, when you're looking at the address bar, the address represents the main part. So it's this area here, essentially, that that HTTP stuff, whatever, someplacesafe.com is right here. Now, if I can compromise your server just a little bit, or I don't even have to compromise your server, I just have to get to between, I just have to see that I can form, all this is is HTML, right? This is code. Well, so if I simply inject into here code, that this page comes from me. This part comes from me. It doesn't have to be a frame. But as the frame comes you're going to clear up what you're looking at. So here I am, you know, I'm Joe user, and Joe's gonna to go to his bank, and he sees his classic login screen. Here's Citibank right here, and here it's asking for username and password right here. Where's username and password going? Here. Now, if I'm really slick, I combine this with a man in the middle attack. Which what I do is I feed this back to through HTTP back to whatever server this is, Citibank server. So I've just fed and gotten, and I get authorized, logged in. So I have an SS. So even SSL wouldn't matter here. So I have an SSL connection to the bank, and I'm now logged into the bank for you. You're even checking. You're you have an SSL connection here to me, so you see the little lock, and you think, ooh, I'm safe, <laughs> right? Okay, it's called cross-site scripting. All I had to do was able to corrupt this script to get the information, and it's the very nature of how the web works. We can have multiple pieces here. Yes, sir? Yeah, what what you break here in CIA? What are you breaking? Yeah, well, let's see, what are you breaking here? Yeah, about integrity. 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 Yeah, so, yeah. That does not have to be... No, that you can do only in iframes. No, 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 no. You can do any. HTML you can do it anywhere, anywhere in the in the cup. Right. The, the only reason I bring up the frame is because it helps to picture it. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's that that's really what it is. Is like it, there's some great demos out there too. I should bring. I'll tell you what. When we get a next meeting, I'll, I'll I'll find a live demo, where literally you can look at the page and if you move your mouse pointer around, you know how you move the mouse pointer around, it gives you the address down at the bottom of the status bar where it's pointing to. Even if you try to do that and point to this area and just like let it hover here so you think you'd see where it might be linking to. Well, they've also cleverly extended that. So the real link is, it'll say something like HTTP colon slash slash someplace safe dot com question mark HTTP where I'm really going to go. This is all that matters. It's called a refer. So it's the referring URL, it, URL, and that's what I follow when I'm the browser. I could care less about what's in front of it. So that means when you just mouse over, you would see the. You would only it would get kind of cut off at this point a little bit, and it would look safe. You might notice a few extra characters there, depending yes. on how long your status bar is. But you're thinking, oh, it looks safe. It's still Chase or City or wherever I am. It's a very very clever thing to do. It's still, it's very. It takes a good webmaster and good web programmers to keep this safe. Um, it also takes, though, your user. And it's why your bank has, like, some of the banks move to this idea of, okay, pick a picture. There's no way I, as the cross-site scripter, could know, like, like for example, um, Citibank did this for a while, where they would put up a grid of nine pictures. And ahead of time, they, the bank and I had agreed on which picture was the one that was associated. So not I had a username, I had a password, and I had a picture. But the picture came from, even from them, from a third party see what you've done. You've defeated, if I don't see the picture, 
Bank you would not price. know what picture to put right. Right, and, and they wouldn't know what picture is the one. Only Citibank would know what picture is the one. There's authentication. Only Citibank would know what picture is the one to show for my account. Right. And if I don't click on that picture, no go. No go. So I'm not in, and the whole thing says, no, you better get out of here. This is not right. Now, also, that's what some of your AV anti-malware programs watch for this stuff. We have phishing in this, like the semantic, latest semantic thing, they have the phishing thing built in there. They look for this kind of scheme, they look for this idea, and it's incorporated into your browser, and it'll warn you, it'll pop up, and this could be an unsafe site. Um, they also put, IE has some of this, tried try to build some of this in here, because what, what flags it is when it sees too many things that differ from the main, you know, we can link like to somebody else's picture, it's called hot linking, it's an easy thing to do on the web. But when we see too many things that differ from the main, Suddenly, a little flag goes off and says, this could be, and Google even does it. If you use like Google's browser, Google Chrome will tell you this is an unsafe. You might wonder where I've been browsing when I see those things. But anyway, it's, it'll tell you, this is an unsafe. Do you want to proceed? And you have to click, basically it's saying, you have to push the idiot button and keep going. I'm not going to accept responsibility anymore. So, but it's still, it's a very difficult thing. You may hear, so they'll, you'll see it written, XSS, cross-site scripting. Okay, so. All right, so we're talking about cross-site simply Smurf, right? We got to do Smurf real quick? Smurf's easy. Okay, Smurf's a network attack. Smurf's not a web attack, okay? Smurf and Fraggle. All right. Everybody knows what ping is, right? All right. And when you ping, you're saying echo something to me. Okay. Well, let's say here I am. This is the perimeter of your network. I am the attacker right here. <laughs> and I'm going to try the famous Smurf attack here. Have you ever seen one these? Have you ever done it? We got tools. We can do it if you want. We got to play. We have to have a day for play. We need to set that up sometime. We got to do a play day. I know we can't do that here. We can do it in my house. I don't care. We'll do it in my house because then you know I'll just isolate the network and, and uh, we'll see. If you if you get past my isolation, then great. Then I'll hire you. All right, because <laughs> it'll be fun. Um, so over here we have your network with a lot of machines. They're very pretty machines. And right here is what we call a border router, right? Some sort of router that lets you connect to the outside world, okay, the internet or whatever would be in between us, right? And each of these guys eventually comes back and what do they do? They talk to the router, right? To get out to the world, okay? Over here is my intended victim. <laughs> Let's see, so here's my big cat. And my victim is, I don't know, whatever server I have that, you know, maybe, maybe it's your database or something like that. And through some feeling things out, obviously I need some other hole in here to figure this out. I, I know this internal IP address. So let's say this internal IP address is 192.168.0.33. Sounds good. 33. Okay. So I send a ping to the broadcast address on this side of the router. See, it takes a lot of things in place to do this. To the broadcast address of this router that says, ping, tell me who you are. It sends that ping out then to everybody else. That's fine. Where does ping normally go to? Wait, you're pinging the router, right? I'm pinging, no, I'm pinging its broadcast address on the inside of your network. There's a, yes. it, it takes, I'm essentially telling it to broadcast internally on your network. Oh. Okay, so I'm pinging, pinging that, it's a poorly configured router that gives me the ability to do this. All right, so default passwords on a router? That's my favorite, there you go. So leave the Cisco Cisco password yes. in there. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Leave it on there, all right, and then this is easy for us to do because now we know the internal configuration. That's, I need to know this. So I mean, there's a lot of need to knows on here, but if you've got those need to knows, oh, it's a classic. See, because now, what normally when I ping, where does the response go to? The router. The response, well, if I'm telling this one to ping, right, and it's it's just going to relay it back to me is where a normal ping would come back to me, but each of these